Red berries do contain a liquid anesthetic that causes a numbing and tingling sensation. So for that same reason, if you play with the red berries and the juice gets all over your fingers, you'll start to feel the side effects a few minutes later. For that same reason, in some places like the Philippines, people actually suck on these red berries to help alleviate cold sores and toothaches. But here in Hawaii, we don't necessarily here. do that. We like to wait uh, for the berries to dry up and then fall to the ground. We then collect all the dried up berries, dehusk it, drill a hole through it, find it and polish it, then turn it into jewelry, such as bracelets and necklaces. Alrighty, now looking at the right hand side, you'll see our starting pineapple field. The Hawaiian word for pineapple is halakahiki. It's really easy to grow a pineapple. All you need to do is go to your local grocery store, purchase a whole pineapple, then cut that top spiky portion off, which is known to be the crown. De-leaf that crown a little, then place it into a bowl of water. Wait about a week or so until you see the roots starting to grow out of it. As soon as you see that, you should go ahead and plant it straight into the soil. Now, it is definitely easy to grow one, but it will test your patience a little because it will take 18 months for that pineapple to grow and then another six months for that pineapple to ripen. So you'll be waiting about two and a half years. But when that first pineapple grows, that will be your one and only normal sized pineapple and it will grow from the center of the crown. The second and third generation pineapples will grow from the side of the crown and they will be no larger than your fist. We like to call those the sugar babies. Sugar babies tend to be more sweet and you can find them at the grocery store labeled as diced pineapples in a can. So now you know, pineapples do not grow from the tree, they actually grow from the ground. Coming up on the right hand side, you're going to see this big large acacia tree. When you look directly beneath it, that is the hapu'u fern. And it's that long, skinny brown stem with the green stringy leaves hanging from it. It's about the height of the tram. These are native Hawaiian plants. So if you ever get the chance to get a closer look at it, take a real good look at the base of that plant. There's this golden hair-like fiber called pulu. The Hawaiians used to use that pulu as a natural gauze or bandage to help cover up their wounds and cut with it. And that is because pulu was really good at soaking up blood. Then in the late 1800s, pulu was used to stuff mattresses and pillows because the texture was very similar to cotton and velvet. Very soft and fluffy like. Coming up on the right hand side, you're gonna see a tall brown tower. There's about five towers here on the plantation and those belong to the Maui Zipline Company. It's one of two zip lines that we host here on the property. This one is very family friendly. They do take kids young as five years old, as long as they weigh 45 pounds. It's a great beginner zip line. The last line does take you over our tropical lagoon. Coming up on the left hand side, you're gonna see the tallest tower, and it does stand at 50 feet tall. They do take walk-ins and reservations, so if you're interested, you can always sign up at the kiosk right next to the red coffee shop. Now looking at the right hand side at these green tea leaves. We now looking at the right hand side of those leaves, those are the tea leaves and it's not the type of tea that we drink, it's spelled the T I. A lot of the locals here in Hawaii plant the tea leaves in front of their houses for good luck and to keep those bad spirits away. When these green tea leaves mature into a yellow brownish color, they tend to fall off the branch. So in the past, the Hawaiians would collect all the yellow and brown tea leaves, weave it up into slippers or flip flops, and it was used to help protect their feet from the sharp lava rocks and the tough terrain that they had to walk through. Now if you take a look at those red tea leaves, the Hawaiians would squeeze and strain that leaf to make a dye. With that dye, they would place it on their kapa or also known as their clothing. And that was because red back then was a sign of royalty. So only the elite, high chiefs, and high monarchy would use them. 
Now, when you take a look at those green peelings, most commonly seen as our hula skirts. Now, it takes about 100 to 180 leaves to make a whole skirt, depending on your hip size. So imagine flipping those leaves over, stringing it together at the bottom of the stem, and then shredding it to give it that nice grassy effect. That's how you make a hula skirt. Oh my god. Continuing, continuing to look on the right hand side, next to those tea leaves, we have a small patch of heliconia flowers. There's about 200 varieties around the world, 22 different types in the state of Hawaii. And we grow a few here in the property, such as the Orange Christmas, the Red Lobster Claw, the Fake Bird of Paradise, and the Real Bird of Paradise. Heliconia flowers are great cutting flowers, can be used for any type of floral decoration, and can also be used as centerpieces. When you cut the flower off the branch, it'll keep its nice vibrant color for about four to five weeks. And it does come in numerous shapes and sizes. Coming up on the left hand side, we have our red ginger. And it's not the type of ginger that we cook or eat with. It's an ornamental flower, just like the heliconia. However, these flowers do not hold a fragrance to it. But if you walk up to it, give it a little squeeze on the petal there, it will leave a nice, sweet, and spicy aroma on your fingertips. And some people say it kind of smells like fruit loops. Now, taking a look at the right-hand side of those two fruit trees standing side by side of one another, Taking a look at the first one, that is our star fruit tree. Now you won't see any star fruits at this time because it just finished up its season. But star fruits do get that name because the fruit itself has five wedges. And when you hold it and turn it to the side, it looks exactly like a star. You can eat a star fruit just like an apple, skin and all. You want to eat it from that yellow ripen stage. Star fruits are also very beneficial for you. They do help cure with headaches, chicken pox, fungal infections such as ringworms, and also hangovers. Now looking at the tree next to that one, that is our jackfruit tree. Jackfruits are the world's largest tree-borne fruit. They usually grow around 3 feet in length, weighing in at 40 to 80 pounds. The largest one we have on record is about 4 feet long, weighing in at 120 pounds. Now you won't see too many jackfruits sold at the grocery stores here. You'll most likely see them at the produce stands or the farmer's market, already prepped for you. If you wanted to prep one yourself, you'd have to oil your hands and the knife you're using because jackfruits contain a very sticky sap on the inside. So with that oiled knife, just cut it straight down the middle, pry it right open, and look for the yellow pods. That is the edible part. It kind of feels like raw chicken breast, but once you get a taste of it, it's like a mixture of bananas, mangoes, and pineapples. So kind of like a mixed fruit salad. If you're all familiar with that gum juicy fruit, juicy fruit was actually inspired by the taste of jackfruit. Now looking at the left hand side, at that stage area there, that is where me and my coworker will be performing a coconut husking demonstration for you all. So if you want to listen, hear, see about it, feel free to join us around the stage over there. Just watch your heading and your footing as you exit off the tram. This will also be a one and only stop. So if you want to walk around